night with uh, Wayne's tread, but we really don't want to let Renault down, and uh, we don't want to let ourselves down. We really want to see this thing fly before we go. Still, with time so short, it's unclear that Renault will get a chance to fire his trebuchet at all. After last night's narrow miss, Wayne's trebuchet is repositioned to be more in line with the target. All we're doing is shifting it slightly to the left. We're throwing to the right a little far. So we've shifted about one inch so that hopefully we'll be dead on center. With the same 250 pound ball as yesterday and the sling at the same length, Wayne believes he is now dead on to hit the wall with his third attempt. One. The third shot is identical to the second in distance. At a range of 200 yards, adjusting the wheels one inch to the left, place the missile bang on top of the hoarding. We've gotten wood. I don't know if we've contacted any stone yet, but we've knocked uh, the uh, hoarding pretty well. Uh, we've made it a little high. We've come down a little bit. That must be the old dump hole there, mustn't it? That's the hole. It's still a bit on this side, isn't it? You've been standing under that hoarding, you've had a jolt. With the trebuchet lined up on the target, Wayne only has to shorten the range by a hair to hit the stone battlements below. So this time what we've done is lengthen the sling about six inches. Right, so right. we're hoping to fire a little bit flatter and get to the top of the hole, top of the wall. Quite difficult, I think, probably, isn't it, on those small adjustments? I mean, do you yes. think? Yeah, yeah, small adjustments are difficult to do. We could um, perhaps not get so lucky this time, but well, it's been very good we'll, so we'll far, see. isn't it? <laughs> Worried that this may be the last attempt, Wayne makes a sudden change of plan. He replaces the 250-pound ball that he's been using with a jumbo 300-pounder. Wayne figures that the heavier ball, clocked at a speed of 127 miles an hour, should breach the wall. But he's wrong. We're going back to uh, uh, the 250 ball instead of the 300 and see if we can get a little more height. They've only got time for one more shot, the American team, and, uh, well, they've been very near, but they might miss it again, and if they don't get it, do you think you can get it with yours? Maybe we are more lucky and we can destroy this wall. Yeah. Well, we'll see. It's a French against Americans. So no, it's, it's not, no, 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 it's but... not against. <laughs> that, that's your way. <laughs> Putting on their kilts for good luck, Wayne's team rushes to get in one final shot. over here it just pulverized the, the stone on the inside it confirms what we came here to prove didn't it that uh, we've, we've had a lovely hit smack in the middle and it smashed it and it's busted it right through to the bat so it's quite obvious that if you've got one of these trebuchets and you've got a castle like this and you've got plenty of time to shoot it you're going to knock it into a powder we can reduce this to rubble. Intoxicated with success, the timber framers bid adieu to the Highlands. But the next morning, Renault is heartened to find that he's not been completely abandoned. You know, if you put your safety chain on... Ed Levin chain and a handful of the Americans have decided to stay on in Scotland to help finish the job. I'm sure it's good enough. No, it's linked into the second what happened? The biggest concern is whether the throwing arm has been fatally weakened at the point where the main axle passes through it. 
To avoid stressing the arm, Renault decides to only partially load his counterweight, using four tons of sand in the 12-ton capacity box. But there are risks to this approach. We're all suitably cautious in having the 250-pound sandstone ball end up in the castle wall rather than in the loch or drop down on the machine or any of the other places it has historically been known to go. Call on, call on, call on. Nobody knows quite what they're doing, so that's what makes it fun. Jesus. A moment of birth. That and terror. <laughs> yeah. Well, birth is usually accompanied by terror. <laughs> Now we are ready for shoot. It's uh, getting me nervous. <laughs> Three, two, one, fire in the hole! The heavy ball and relatively light counterweight result in the missile landing dangerously close to the trebuchet. Well, yeah, I mean, we knew that there wasn't enough weight in, really, didn't we? It was just an experiment. The counterweight is not uh, so heavy. We yeah. must put two yeah. bags more, yep. two tons. Of sand. Yes, of sand, yeah. yes. Two more tons of sand are added. I don't think there's enough weight for it to go really well yet. This machine wants a lot of weight, 10, 12 tons probably, to make it go properly. Bruno thinks if we keep putting little bits in, he might just get there without busting the axle, which is natural, of course, because it's his machine. Fair enough. We are going to get a good shot. I'm sure, sure, sure. Renault's optimism is justified. The missile falls just a few yards short of the wall and a bit to the right. team decides to give it one more day. But the next morning starts with snow, followed by a heavy downpour. Well, basically, we're at the last day. We've got, we've got between the rain and the mud, we've got a rigger's nightmare. Uh, it's, it's really taking its toll on the ropes. The, the mud grinds in, and it starts tearing up the fibers. The, the water helps make the ropes stretch. Uh, if you look around the place, there's ropes in the mud, and no rigger likes seeing that. So. Uh, we're doing the best we can to keep our ropes clean, but it's an uphill battle. Last night's final shot was short of the wall because it was thrown too high. Renault believes the sling is slipping off its prong too soon. So to delay release and lower the trajectory, the prong is bent forward. <laughs> We've got the right amount of loft, we've got the right amount of range, we're just missing the target off to the side. For days, Renault has suspected that his trebuchet is pointing just to the right of the wall. But the loaded machine is too heavy to shift, and he faces the possibility that he may have to go home, having achieved only a near miss. At the last minute, Marcus offers a solution. If we had our preferences, we'd uh, be able to move the machine over a little bit, but we're afraid of shattering the machine, particularly with all the weight in the basket. So we're going to move the channel of the ball a little bit to the side so we can change our angle of attack. The range is good, but we just want to shift it over to the left a bit. By shifting the channel that holds the ball slightly to the left, they hope to redirect the missile. It works. Almost. Another three feet and Renault would have had a direct hit. Unless shifting the channel was just a fluke, one more nudge to the left should bring the trebuchet right on target. Go, baby! Come on! Oh, that looks good. That's right. After two throws, which are slightly high of the wall itself, 
Renault orders a minute adjustment of the prong in order to lower the trajectory. With frayed ropes and a storm threatening to close down the siege, everything now hangs on Renault's ability to quickly get on target. Bullseye on the battlements. Well done. Well done. Hey. This whole wall, if you run your eye down here, it's bellied out. Just cracks all through it. Anybody standing back here would have been mincemeat. Ah oui, ça c'est un bon coup ça. In a real siege. It would only be a matter of time be before the wall is reduced to smithereens. In terms of the kind of dialogue that existed between attack and defense, it is very clear now to me that the appearance of the trebuchet on the scene shifted that balance radically in favor of attack. Tremendous respect for the medieval engineers. They were able to build a frightfully powerful and highly accurate and easily adjustable machine. If you're under siege, you've got to try to knock these things out before they're actually built. Because once they're built, you're sunk. Well, the, the trebuchet is this big machine who can block the wall and uh, also. A trebuchet must be the uh, wolf war. Wolf war? Wolf war? Wolf. Wolf. It's so difficult. We must change this name. <laughs> wolf. wolf. <laughs> it is clear from the experiment that both types of trebuchets work. Because it could so easily be increased in weight, the swinging box design was the improvement that tipped the balance in favor of attack. So the great wall-busting siege engine Edward employed at Stirling Castle was almost certainly a trebuchet with a giant swinging counterweight. A weapon that dominated siege warfare for 200 years. It was not until the late 15th century, the end of the Middle Ages, that the superior